OK, let's do these stats for August 2024. We have a 6.8 kilowatt peak array split east and west, so 3.4 kilowatt peak on each side, going into a Give Energy battery system with a combined capacity of 14.7 kilowatt hours, so a 9.5 and a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery combined. And those are both going into a Gen 2 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. We also have a Toshiba air to air heat pump system that runs our heating in the winter and cooling in the summer. And finally, we have a Mixergy IHP integrated heat pump cylinder that runs our hot water. And CAT also has an EV, which is a, currently a Fiat 500e. So as always, let's start with the Give Energy monthly report. Now, if you've not seen these before, if you go to your Give Energy web portal and head down to reports at the bottom left in the menu here, click on that and it will take you to this page where you can generate the report. And you just click on report type, monthly, select the month you're interested in, so August for our particular situation, and then hit generate report. And then that will give you all of the stats summarized nice and neatly in these charts here. So for example, we've got a generation chart which shows that we generated 637 kilowatt hours, uh, which is about normal actually for this time of year, amazingly. Um, we had a, a bit of a mixed bag. Didn't ever really get above 30, annoyingly. 28.4 there, 28.1 there. So yeah, that was about the, the, the best we got on the 16th of August. Um, we've got the home consumption, which shows that we consumed 386.57 kilowatt hours. These big spikes here are basically when we charge the car. Um, there were a couple of interesting ones here and here on the 18th and the 21st. That was actually when we took part in the free octopus uh, energy sessions. So what we did there was we um, plugged in the car and charged it up uh, during that the one hour block uh, for each of these two days. We also tried to charge our battery. Um, I had a bit of trouble initially with that because we were on intelligent flux, which doesn't allow you to do anything with your battery yourself. Or octopus controls it. So what I did, in fact, given it's about the time of year when it was um, time to switch, what I ended up doing was uh, switching um, after the uh, 18th of um, August, I switched from intelligent flux to regular flux. So I think this was the last day we uh, we were on intelligent flux and then for the rest of the month we were on uh, regular flux. So I've taken control of the battery and it means that I can now do the uh, the charging and boosting of the um, of the car and boosting of the battery if we need to. Uh, and in fact you can see that in this uh, bottom uh, chart here that shows our grid usage. You can see we um, imported 525.7 kilowatt hours and we exported 748.7 or 78 kilowatt hours. And uh, you can see that uh, obviously Octopus were doing all sorts of uh, crazy things with the Intelligent Flux tariff um, during the first uh, 17 or 18 days. I think it was 18 days. And then from then on, you can see the uh, the red lines there are much more consistent with the uh, the amount that we're importing uh, from day to day. So that's basically us just filling up the um, uh, battery um, overnight. And I guess on this day, we probably did some sort of car charging or something along those lines. And then if I scroll up, as you can see on the energy flow graph, this is now looking a little bit more interesting. So last month, basically the battery wasn't really being used to support the home at all. But uh, now the battery is being used a little bit to support the home uh, during the uh, evenings. Um, the solar is also now being used to support the home a little bit. And some of the solar is now going to the battery, which it wasn't really doing before. The battery was basically being charged overnight by Octopus. But now um, I'm able to charge the battery almost all the way up over uh, in the three hour off peak period that Octopus Flux gives you. But that's not quite enough to completely fill it. So the following day, a little bit gets uh, uh, taken from the excess solar and used to top up the battery. So um, everything's basically back to how it was before I switched to intelligent flux. So now I'm just doing the standard charging it up, charging the battery up overnight during the uh, 2 till 5 a.m. off peak period, letting the solar top the battery up. And then I'm force exporting for a good chunk of the peak period. Um, I'm down to about just over two and a half hours now because if I leave it much longer than that, then I find that I don't have enough battery capacity to last through the night. So I think by the time I hit the end of September, probably two and a half hours will be about what I'll be exporting each day. And that seems to be about right. So as I said a minute ago, our generation was 637 kilowatt hours, which actually is almost bang on what we would expect based on the PVGIS estimate, this uh, blue shaded area here. So uh, yeah, pretty similar to last year, in fact. And as for consumption, you can see on this last bar here, this is August 2024, uh, we uh, consumed a total of 386.57 kilowatt hours. 
Um, the EV accounted for about 84 kilowatt hours of that, so slightly less than usual. Last month it was more like 120. But the most interesting thing for this month, in fact, is the hot water, which you can see is only 38.17 kilowatt hours. Compared to last year, so this is August from 2023, our hot water usage was 125 kilowatt hours. So we're down to you know less than a third of what we were using this time last year. And that's entirely down to the fact that we're now using the Mixergy IHP cylinder, this integrated heat pump cylinder that we got installed um, about a month and a half ago now. It's been working fantastically. It's done exactly what we intended it to. The um, energy consumption for heating our hot water is um, slashed right down now so this is about the level I would expect for the next few months as we go into winter it's probably going to creep up a little bit I'm expecting maybe for it to hit closer to 50 maybe a bit more we'll have to see how it goes um, as the obviously the water that goes into the cylinder gets colder which means it needs heating up a bit more so a bit more electricity will be needed to uh, run the heat pump to, to heat that hot water but uh, yeah that has um, almost single-handedly um, resulted in this much lower consumption than than the same uh, month last year so last year we were about 500 kilowatt hours uh, this year we're at uh, 386 so I'm super happy with that very pleased with how the IHP is performing I'm intending to do a much more detailed IHP specific stats video at some point so uh, keep your eyes open for that one um, but yeah for now this is the the, the summary for the month and uh, yeah it's looking pretty good so was I right to switch from intelligent flux to regular flux? Well, as it happens in August, we had a slightly higher generation to consumption ratio, this uh, this ratio on this x-axis here on the uh, my rule of thumb tariff chart that I developed. Um, and we, it was slightly higher than uh, July, in fact, because we actually consumed less during August, uh, partly due to the, the IHP getting involved in the uh, reduction of hot water consumption. So we're actually up at 1.65 for our generation to consumption ratio, which puts us still slap bang in the middle of this uh, crossover point where all three of these um, these main tariffs here, Intelligent Go, Regular Flux and Intelligent Flux are all on top of each other. So yeah, it's about time to switch. Um, certainly the amount of generation that we're going to be uh, getting is going to drop away through the course of September and into October. So probably what I will do is I'll stay on Regular Flux for the entirety of the rest of September and then I will see where we're at in at the beginning of October. I suspect that we'll probably be, you know, heading down in this direction. So I may or may not switch um, to uh, regular go. It depends on, you know, once the, the heating kicks in and we start to consume a lot. We can't quite get intelligent go yet because the uh, EV charger that we've got, the Give Energy EV charger, is not yet compatible with intelligent go. I hear rumors that it's on its way. Uh, I'm hoping it will be soon. I don't. I'm not holding out a huge amount of hope that it will be ready by October. But yeah, if anyone knows any different, please let me know. Uh, they did tell me that there was no plans to get the uh, Give Energy EV charger integrated, but uh, I know from inside sources that that's actually a bit of a, a, a bit of a lie, and um, they are indeed working on it. And it's just a matter of getting it through the beta testing. So. Yeah, hoping for that, which will allow us to switch to Intelligent Go over the winter instead of regular Go, and that will hopefully save us a fair bit extra. Um, but uh, for now, happy with staying on regular flux, and maybe we'll switch at the end of September, maybe partway through October, we shall see. So if we now look at the actual cost versus what I predicted we would have had on the various different tariffs, you can see I wasn't far off once again. Um, the blue line is what my rule of thumb suggests based on just the consumption and the generation uh, values. Um, these blue lines all exactly, basically exactly the same within a couple of quid of each other. Um, what would have actually happened based on the half hourly meter data from Octopus is shown in the red lines here. Um, and yeah, you can see intelligent flux and flux essentially almost identical. Um, our bill was indeed around about minus £48 for, um, uh, for August. If we'd been on Intelligent Go, we could have done slightly better because obviously our battery is bigger than what I assume most people would have given the rule of thumb assumptions, which means that I'm able to export a fair bit more than probably what you would normally do um, if you had a sort of uh, an optimised battery for a typical house you would not be able to necessarily export quite as much as, as I'm able to do. We've got a slightly bigger battery than most people because we're, we've got our um, uh, air-to-air heat pump system that we run in the winter and I like to have a little bit more battery capacity to help support that. So we've got probably 50% more than we need for, in the summer, um, uh, but that uh, definitely helps in the winter. But, you know, if we were able to use Intelligent Go um, during the summer, then we would also be able to export a bit more um, at that uh, preferential rate. 
So we shall see. If the tariff rates stay as they are, then um, switching to Intelligent Go for the full year might actually be worthwhile, as I described in one of my previous videos. Um, but yeah, for now, happy with uh, regular flux and hopefully be able to switch to either Go or Intelligent Go uh, in the next month or two. So finally, here's the money chart. So our final bill for the month was minus £47.22. We also got refunded £3.29 based on the energy we used during the free octopus sessions. Uh, if we didn't have the solar battery or EV and we were running our um, hot water with gas, then that would have give, um, meant that we would have had to have paid £131 instead. So that gives us a total saving of £181.66 for August. Pretty similar to the last few months. Heading down slightly as we go into autumn, but uh, um, yeah, we'll see where that goes over the next couple of months. It's a bit lower than last um, year, the same month in August 2023, but that's because the tariff rates were higher both for import and export last year. So one of the ironies of having solar and battery and all that stuff is that the higher the, the tariff rates, the more you save. So um, I can't say I'm complaining. It's, uh, you know, it's good when the energy prices are low for, for everybody in, uh, concerned. I'm still getting a good saving, so I'm, I'm fine with that. So more about this, uh, these free energy sessions. This is a bit of a fake saving because although we consumed the energy at the sort of day rate and we got refunded at the day rate, which for regular flux is about 21 and a half pence, if we weren't partaking in in that those energy saving sessions uh, we would have uh, done that consumption overnight at the off-peak rate for a regular flux which would have been 13 pence instead of the 21 and a half pence so really the saving shouldn't be based on the 21 and a half pence of the day rate it should be based on how much we would have spent otherwise which was uh, 13 pence so realistically this is a slightly overinflated value because Although this um, um, rate of minus £47 would have been a little bit lower because we would have consumed a bit more overnight at the 13 pence, we wouldn't have had this £3 um, uh, consumption at, uh, at the peak, at the, well, the day rate. So really the saving is, is probably closer to £2 rather than £3, something in that ballpark. So um, the s saving on the kilowatt hours that we used would have been 13 pence instead of 21 and a half pence. So this is a, probably a, a subject for a whole video in and of itself. So I might do that one at some other time if I can be bothered. Um, but yeah, just for sake of argument, if you were on Intelligent Go, for example, and you you got this saving of £3.29, actually all of that consumption would have been at 7 pence. So it wouldn't have been anywhere close to that. It would have been much lower, much, much lower. Um, so if you're on Intelligent Go, it makes you wonder whether it's actually even bother, worth bothering taking part in, the, in these sessions. Well, that's it for the stats for August 2024. Hope you found that useful. I'll catch you in the next one.